I am here to tell you all about my unmedicated birth story. Hello everybody! We are officially two months postpartum. Welcome back to my channel. I am finally back here to tell you my birth story. So get your favorite drink, cup of joe perhaps, that's what I've got and I'm going to tell you everything about my birth story. This is actually my second time filming this. The first time I got way off track, so I'm hoping this time I can stay a little bit more on the straight and narrow and really just tell you exactly what happened. The last time I made this video, it was like 40 minutes long and I was zigzagging all over the place. I actually made some notes this time, so let's hope that I can stay on course. We went into the pregnancy not wanting to know the gender and we ended up having a baby boy. I am so, so excited and we named him Dawson. Dawson John, uh, my dad's name is John, so that's super special and I just have him on the monitor right now, so I am keeping an eye on him. He's just upstairs. I am here to tell you all about my unmedicated birth story. So my goal was to go unmedicated, and that's what we did successfully. I am very, very proud that I was able to do it unmedicated. It was not an easy thing and i'm going to be brutally honest with how i felt during this experience let's just get down to it so it was september 21st and my induction was supposed to begin on the 22nd mark and i actually ended up going for dinner on the 21st at the keg well today is potentially the day before we have a baby and we have come to the keg this is where we came when we found out we were pregnant 10 months ago and now we're coming here the night before or maybe the second night before baby comes so after this we're going to get a little foley put in unless the cervix is dilated enough on its own but i don't really feel like i'm dilated so we'll see but tonight is a great night and we're at the keg and it's crazy times that's where we went when we found out we were pregnant. So it was, you know, full circle. When we found out we were pregnant, we went there to celebrate. And right before we had our baby, we went there to celebrate. So that was really nice. From the restaurant, we went straight to the hospital to begin the process of induction. We're leaving the keg and now to the hospital. What a freaking weird feeling. Which is having a Foley catheter inserted right beside the baby's head to help the cervix dilate. So it was, I think, 8 p.m. we went in and they inserted the Foley catheter. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> That's your water broke right there. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> You wait there an hour and a half for them to monitor your heart rate as well as the baby's heart rate and make sure that the balloon that's upside their head, it doesn't get affected. So I was told that once the balloon is inserted, it will likely take 12 to 24 hours for labor to begin. So you go home and you let the balloon fall out on its own. Once you're dilated enough, it'll fall out. So just go home, take some time and I'll grab all you're fine. While we were waiting in the hospital for that one and a half hours while they're monitoring the heart rate of the baby, my contractions started. And I was like, what? I thought this was going to take 12 to 24 hours. In the hospital while I was laying there, I had my husband start timing contractions. At that time, they were probably every eight minutes apart but lasting about 45 seconds to a minute long. So before we left the hospital, I was like, hey, my contractions have began. What do I do? Do I just stay here? Is this my labor? I couldn't believe it. I thought I had 12 to 24 hours to get home, get my stuff together, have a shower, you know, take my time with things. Anyways, they were like, no, go home, have some rest, get a sleep, come back when, you know, time your contractions the 411. Is it 411 or 311? Anyways, we went back home and the contractions were getting more intense. 
and I thought, holy guacamole, this is only the beginning. I found it quite painful. Or it's just like an intense, intense pressure. Anyways, I said, Mark, you try to get some sleep. I'll time the contractions. And I tried to go without Tylenol. Anyways, they got worse, like more intense, more closer together. They're probably five minutes apart, lasting a minute and a half. I was trying to breathe through it. I knew maybe they would space out again. So I woke Mark up. I was like, no, I need the Tylenol and the gravel. Please help me. So he ran to the pharmacy. In the meantime, I was like, okay, I'll try to have a shower, a bath, just to relax myself. This is crazy. Once I was in the bath and I got my hair all wet, my contractions really intensified. And by the time I was out of the bath, they were every two to three minutes apart, lasting a minute and a half. So at this point, basically we had to get back to the hospital. And I had wet hair. I had just hopped out of the shower. I'm like, I don't want to go into the hospital with a freaking mop, wet mop on my head. Like, come on. And plus, I was like, this is only the beginning. I should be able to walk through this. I should be fine. So I was blow drying my hair in between contractions. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, I'm going to go It's going to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's in labor having tra contractions every two minutes. And she's got time to do her hair. <laughs> oh, you cracked me up. And oh, I was feeling it. I was like, this is only the start. How am I gonna do this? But anyways, I was just walking through it. I'd blow dry my hair and just like walk and breathe. And Mark was like, Laura, we gotta go. What are you doing blow drying your hair? So anyways, he's like running around the house, grabbing the birth bag, all of our essentials. And he packed the Jeep and we were on our way. And he actually filmed us in the Jeep on the way. I'm like dying and he's having a great time. We got this. We're getting there. Oh, I think you have your brights on. We are ripping. We're doing good, hey? Think about that sandy beach. Some sunsets. Gonna be holding your baby soon. Uh, deep breaths. Deep breaths. We got to the hospital. He's like, oh, do you need a wheelchair? I was like, nah. Walking. Walking helps. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Let's get you a wheelchair. Girl's strong. It's amazing. She don't need no wheelchair. Walking, just to keep things moving, help with labor, everything like that. So we walked all the way to the doors and they were locked. Lovely. So my walk got a little longer. Anyways, we had to go to a different door. And finally we got in. We got into the first room where the midwife assessed me to see if I should be admitted or not. And yes, I was admitted. They moved us to the big room where we would have the baby. And it was like, okay, this is real. And we didn't sleep, so that's great. No sleep at all. I think it was about two in the morning when I was admitted. I called my parents to come and we got things rocking. <laughs> Doing good. My contractions were every two minutes, lasting like a minute and a half, basically my entire labor. My mom came and she was a huge, huge help. She's a nurse. So her and my husband were basically my main support people and really helped me get through this. This was like where the midwives really shined because they allowed me to do all different sorts of positions and I'm not sure if I would have been able to do that if I were just with a doctor. I'm not sure. Basically right off the bat I was on the birth ball and that was the most comfortable spot for me at that time. Not standing, not walking, not laying down. It was on the ball and I would just rotate on the ball and that was my favorite spot to be. And wisdom teeth was the only surgery you've had, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was on the ball for a long, long time and they were like, okay, if you want to get things moving and kind of get things progressing, you should probably try different positions. And at that time I was like, oh my gosh, I can't move. This is the only comfortable spot was on that ball. But 
they recommended I try different positions to help move the baby further down. So I think from there I went to the tub and I was just exhausted. I was so tired, so, so tired. This has been probably 10 hours of these continuous contractions lasting a minute and a half long. So in the tub, in between a contraction, I could almost fall asleep. I had two minutes and I was like falling asleep, but it was nice in the tub, but it was still very intense. So when a contraction came, I felt like I would just stiffen up and my legs would just go straight across the tub. Yeah, not, not comfortable. Finally, they did check me again, probably 10 hours in, and I was only six centimeters and I was just feeling a little bit defeated. At that point, after like 10 hours, and I was only six centimeters, and that pain was, I found it to be, not going to lie, quite painful. I was going into my mind through each contraction. I had my printed affirmations, which were so helpful. If you're going into labor, print off some affirmations because I would just read them. I would go into my mind, I would breathe, and I would read my affirmations. I would even get my husband, because he didn't know what to say to me during these um, contractions. So I just had him read them to me, which was nice. And counter pressure, the midwife did it, and then I had my mom and my husband take turns giving me counter pressure on my back. That was a huge, huge, huge help. They checked me six centimeters and feeling defeated. I was like, I think I'm gonna get the epidural. That was the time where I was like, I can't do this. My water hadn't broken. It was just, I almost gave in, but I had the option to break my water or get an epidural. If they broke my water, my contractions would get more intense and closer together, but it would hopefully progress things again naturally. And I was so close. Let me tell you, I was like, I can't handle more intense contractions and more often. I was feeling like this is insane, but I ended up getting them to break my water and that did intensify things. I was then on the bed with on all fours, leaning over the back. That felt good for a little bit. I had the peanut ball between my legs. <laughs> I didn't actually really like that position on the side. The peanut ball is huge and it was, I didn't find it very comfortable, but they did have me go into that position to move the baby a little bit at one point. That really did get things rocking again. It was still another probably seven hours of contractions and they checked me and I was about nine centimeters dilated and we were doing it. So they had me start pushing and it was already happening instinctively i couldn't help it it was just happening your body just knows and it's just like you can't stop it you're just pushing and i think i started pushing when i was on all fours on the bed and then they were like okay if you're gonna deliver we can try squatting at the end of the bed so that's what i did at the end of the bed they had a squat uh, bar that i could hold on to and then i just squatted at the end of the bed and pushed like let the let basically the body push it, the baby that was good I needed things to move faster because this is like we i've had to push this baby out they would just check the baby's heart rate throughout labor by just putting on like a little doppler things on my stomach so they would just hold it on there i'd be like dying and they would just hold it on there like through a contraction and his heart rate was fine the entire time plus they were checking my blood sugars throughout the whole thing so they'd prick my finger because I didn't eat the whole time I don't think I mentioned I did puke probably on like hour four six maybe and I puked up my beautiful keg dinner it was so sad anyways getting off topic so then I was pushing <laughs> So because this was like a 20 hour labor, I had a few different midwives in and out of the room and my midwife was busy with another couple, but then the new midwife that was, you know, there's two midwives that were under for me um, that would cover each other. She finally came in when I was like ready to push and I really liked this midwife. So I was thankful that she showed up at that time. And then the midwife that she was working with was awesome. Like she is exactly who I needed. It really makes a difference who's in the room when you have your baby. So really make sure that you have a solid group because it makes a huge difference. This midwife was like, just like to the point and like, let's go, you can do this. Very enthusiastic, full of life. It was like, yeah, 
yes, that's what I need. The final position I was in was on the floor on like a small squat stool. My husband behind me doing counter pressure and actually, you know what he did? He was uh, rubbing my nipples to stimulate uh, oxytocin, natural oxytocin which I was like, at this point, I don't care, do it. My mom was in the room, I don't care. Actually, my mom was holding one of my legs on the floor and the mid one midwife had my other leg and then there was a midwife in the middle to deliver the baby. That was my final pushing position and my mom was right down there in the thick of it. After about probably two hours of pushing, it was getting to the point where they were like, hey, Laura, you have to push. You have to give us everything you've got. And I was so tired, so exhausted, and I thought I was doing my best. But then the very enthusiastic midwife was like, Laura, if you don't push now, we're going to have to go and get the doctors, and they're probably going to cut you open. And after all this hard work, that's what's going to happen. And I was like... I literally said, you're scaring me in between my contraction. I'm like, oh, that's aggressive. But to be honest, it worked. Cause I was like, no, I not just do this for 20 hours and have that happen. I was like, frick that. So I pushed with all my might and they were like, there's, you know, like it was so intense. And they were like, there's the head and like, you can feel it. And they got me to feel just the tip of his head coming out. It was so crazy. And they're like, you could do this, go, you know, like the whole room, it's just like electric. And we did it, we pushed. So once the head's out, it's basically the thing, the rest of the body just comes out. It's like, bloop. <laughs> and he came out and they put him right on my chest. And it was the most emotional experience in my entire life. The most beautiful thing. And it felt like life was only just beginning. It was like, oh the most beautiful thing and mark my husband was right behind me so he was bawling his eyes out i was crying my mom was crying oh it was incredible <laughs> calm down laura plopped him on my chest it's the most amazing feeling in the world and then i was able to like they just kept him on me and i went over to the bed and like laid down and i was able to lay there with him on my chest for like an hour maybe even two hours which was amazing all the skin to skin and my husband cut the cord and oh it was so beautiful it was so 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 incredible literally the most incredible experience and we stayed in the hospital one night they had to keep an eye on his blood sugars which all came back normal um we could have went home actually after the sugars but we opted to stay we were so tired like hadn't eaten anything at this point we were up for two days and it was just incredible amazing crazy and I'm sure I'm missing things and forgetting things but that's basically the gist I'm trying to get to it quick so that it's not a huge long video but we did it and you can do it too I want to do um, what I packed in my hospital bag like what I actually used for the unmedicated birth and yeah I just have some more videos I'd like to make around it but I will say that ultimately this comes down to your mindset hugely no matter how you give birth it's a beautiful thing if your goal is to go unmedicated prepare your mind because that's what it comes down to you can do anything it's just getting through those contractions one at a time and you can do it and I think printing off affirmations was one of the key elements for me and I reread the same ones the entire time and they worked okay I'm gonna leave it there but if you have any comments or want me to explain something a little bit more just comment down below and let me know and yeah of course I need to start filming my life with this baby it is the most amazing but I just that's my birth story. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.